friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds and make them over and share the process and my vision with you all here on the channel. So in today's video, yes, I'm going to share with you if you're like me and you're like, oh, you have a project in mind, you're like, oh, but I have to order it and I have to wait for it to come via shipping, via mail. But uh, let me share with you how you can print your own decoupage paper right at home to get that idea out of your head onto your project and get your project done. So how many watching get their inspiration from Pinterest? I know I spend a lot of time on that getting inspiration. And there are a lot of free printables where you can download, copy and paste, and put them into your program. I use Excel and then size them to what you need. I always look to make sure that they are uncopyrighted, they say free printables, and you're able to use them. So there is one option. And then the next option is this when you fall in love with the image and you're like, oh, it's part of small business on Etsy, but it's minimal. It, it is minimal and you have it and you're not paying any shipping and handling. So yes, yeah, so that is an instant download. You add it to your cart and then when you buy it, it'll be able to download. But oh my gosh, look at the graphics. Look at how beautiful these are. And then a lot of times I'll pop into their stores and see what else they have because a lot of times if you're doing multiple items from each one of the stores, they will give you a discount. But look at how many beautiful ones are on there. The nice thing about being able to pick instantly like this is you have the item in your front of you. You're like, oh, I wish I had, I wish I needed this size. So yes, once you instantly download it, you can put it into your file that you can size it. And there you have your own decoupage paper. So yes. So yeah, I did pick multiples from that store. So now after I did that, I paid for it. Um, now they'll send me a message, my recent orders, and then it'll tell me to view my downloads. So this is where I go in, I view my downloads, and then it'll give me download, download, download. So then it will be on my computer. For me, I have an iMac, so I just go into my instant downloads, I go and find my images, I click on my images, then it puts it into pages. Now you can print from pages if you want, but that's going to print the size that they were that was giving. So what I do is I go up and I copy it and then put it in my Excel program. That way I can size it to the item that I am working on. Before I ever print, I go into my print feature and then I look at to see what size it actually is going to print on the piece of copier paper. Because yes, we're just printing on plain old copier paper. Now that I've done all that, this is what I'm working on. Yes, I still have plenty of baskets and tins that I can make pretty. And so that's what I'm doing for you all today. So my first up is this beautiful, just white aged milk can. It does not need painted. It's clean. It's got, it's got a little, you know, it has shows a little bit of age, but that's just the way we like it. So perfect. Look at how the paper that I printed out just matches it perfectly that's what i mean you can completely match to what you want and i can size it i could have made it bigger i could have made it smaller just all what i want to print it out so first i go ahead and i'm going to cut out around my image and i'm going to mod podge it on another piece of copier paper because i love the thickness Now why my Mod Podge is still wet, I left just a little bit of the copier paper showing underneath because I'm going to take a lighter and I'm going to burn off. So where it's wet, the Mod Podge is still wet, it's really not going to catch on fire like dry paper would. It's just going to singe those edges and give it that nice worn off look. And it's funny, I just bought this lighter at the dollar store and it was... <laughs> yeah um yeah one one use only apparently here as you see i just prefer to burn it with a lighter have it over a bucket of water 
extinguish the flame using just the tapping motion of a wet rag. Safety first. I know I, I did this before and I had a lot of suggestions of using a candle, uh, but I just don't want that continuous flame. But y'all do what you all want to do and what you're comfortable with. So now that I've got that all done, I'm going to go ahead and put Mod Podge on the back of it, really making sure that I get those edges, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply it to my milk can. Since I double papered this, it really, there's not a lot of wrinkles that you have to deal with. But the one thing I do want to do because dry paper, wet Mod Podge, it wants to roll up. So all I do is take that rag that I had, I wring it out really well, and then I just lay it on top of, since I this is copier paper, and I printed this, I'm not going to just dab water spots. I'm going to lay the whole rag on the entire image at the same time. That way, if it changes any of the coloring, it changes it the whole way through. I don't want to just dab here and there and just have wet spots because it's not really sealed in with anything like your decoupage paper that you order it order is and this one did not change color at all so all i'm doing after it is dry is just sealing it in with some varathane clear wax When I picked up this box, it was already painted white. It's super cute. I love, I love these cheese boxes and I don't think they get used as much as they should because there's so much character in their wood. And this fits perfectly. See how it's nice to be able to size appropriate it. Yes, that doesn't line up just the way that that, that dried. That's the way that lid fits on now, but oh, I thought this Little Sheep's coloring matches perfectly. So it's going to be another repeat process of putting it on copier paper, burning it, and then applying it. So some, you know, not every project has to be a major overhaul. Even just the simplest is adding a little piece of paper to something. Just, you know, just makes one smile when they look at it. I do not have an inkjet printer. That's why I said when you go to wet it, you want to wet it all at the same time. So see how it faded my color just a little bit by getting it wet. So to bring that color back to life, I need to seal my paper in any way. And I don't want to spray it with a polycrylic or any type of top coat. I'm just going to go in with a little bit of antiquing wax and some of the black wax and very gingerly just darken this paper up. It'll, it's as simple as that of bringing this paper back to life and not letting it look sun bleached because I got it wet. On standby, I have some of the clear wax to act as eraser to lighten it up if I need to. Adding paper to these otherwise unwanted rusty crusty tins like this little lunch pail. Yes, I've had this in my booth forever and, and nobody probably even gives it a second glance. But now that we're going to be adding this crow paper on there, I bet they will.
sealed, need to seal the paper in anyway. And I like the age that the black wax and the antiquing wax mixed together is giving it. It didn't really fade this one awful much, off, you know, too much, but it's really just popping a lot on this little tin. So I added a little bit more of the two waxes together and without putting any of the natural wax on there to really darken it up. It's nice that you have that opportunity or the ability to change it. Oh, and this black watering can by itself is gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. But yet again, it gets overlooked. So look at this paper. Oh, oh my goodness. I love horses. Oh, this and being able to fit it completely on this whole thing. So yes, same process yet again. But we are, everyone is going to be just a little bit different in as we work towards the all 12 that I'm making over for you today. Um, there's just a little bit changes here and there with each one as we go. Here you can tell that it kind of turned the paper green, but still no worries, no worries. That black wax, antiquing wax is such a problem solver. And I know I do not have to put flowers in this, but there's just something about adding florals. Even in a watering can, that's just going to now be used for decor. So I'm actually just putting some of the Dollar Tree floral flo foam in there, stuffing it as much as I can. And, and part of secondhand shopping is always looking at the greenery to see what they have available. Of this beautiful aged lavender though i'm not a fan of the really green green leaves that are added onto it so i'm going to go ahead and take them off and i have to remove a little bit of the i i overstuffed it i overstuffed it but it's better to be have to take away that's one of the reasons i don't really glue it all together so now i'm just snipping all my lavender apart taking the parts off that i don't want like i said that that's just going to make it hard to stick in my floral foam as it is, and I don't really care for that overly green compared to that dusty color that this lavender is. Here's another tin that I wish the wording when I sprayed it with weather defense would have popped more that you could read it. It just looks like a hot mess. So yeah, it's going to get a makeover too. And look at this bunny. Oh my gosh. I am a true primitive lover at heart when it comes to these animals. I picked up this greenery. Luckily, it had the 
sale. Is it half off or 40% off? I always forget. I'm always just happy when it's on sale at Hobby Lobby. So I usually will pick up it in twos when it's on sale. And this is just some trending greenery that I thought will really make this tin pop. So now we're at the halfway point and now we're going to start adding some paint to our tins. I um, have had these kind of just hanging out and just, I don't know, you all tell me, does New Age Galvanize sell in your retail booth? I'm on the craft side of our antique mall so I can have new items like this when I'm in a booth in the antique side. You can't, but no, I think they're very unique. Um, so I'm going to get them painted up and I'm not going to paint the whole Thing. I don't think that is necessary. I'm just going to use some of the coal black and I'm kind of curious on how the fusion paint is going to paint on metals. So first off, I'm just going to go ahead and trace. There's always that little line where they bent the metal over and that's going to give me my stopping point. gotta love black paint because it usually always covers in one coat and I think it's gorgeous other than yeah I can see the brush strokes but it's metal there's nothing for that paint to absorb into so I'm going to go ahead and I want to get rid of some of those paint strokes by just starting off with them some steel wool and if you want to know if it is on here yeah it hardly even moved it so I'm going to go up to some 220 sandpaper I don't care if it goes down and pieces and parts. I just want to get rid of a little bit of those brush strokes and take down the shininess, but wow. I have to say, yes, fusion paint will paint metals wonderfully. Now these are the ones that I copy and pasted that I didn't have to purchase, but they're a little bit on the larger side. I love the graphics. I Chickens, roosters always do really well, um, so I'm just going to cut it down. Not only is there something about burning the edges of this paper that just takes it to the next level, but double papering it just makes that label pop. I just, I cannot explain how beautiful I feel double layering these papers onto these tins. Just, it's just amazing. Well, here's a tin that probably somebody thought should just go into the trash, but oh, I'm glad that it did not. Yeah, there's nothing nothing going on on this tin other than the lid is, eh, the lid, you got to work with it to get it on there. So for storage, eh, it might just be a pretty or something you don't need to get often. But I went ahead and taped off the handle. I want to save that handle, and I'm going to be using some Fort... York red fusion paint on this you all oh wow and I know after doing the other metals that it's going to turn out beautifully on this metal
And I have two of these tins that are pretty close to being the same. And the same thing, you just can't see the original graphics on this lard pail. Maybe dry milk. I'm not, see, I don't, I can't read it. <laughs> I can kind of tell that it says milk. But there again, it's the perfect one to paint. And I probably talk way too much about fusion paint, but I don't know if I've ever loved a paint as much as I love this paint. It just goes on so smooth. Yeah, the chances of it covering the first time, like the black, you know, the darker the color, the more chance. But even with this, that first coat goes on, then the second coat goes over it, and the coverage is just amazing. A primer, a paint, and a top coat all in one. And I always link the colors I use, and if you want to support Vonda's small business, the painted heirloom, I know she would appreciate it. And there's a 10% off code for first-time buyers. And this color of red is amazing. And there again, I can't really see a terrible, a lot, you know, a lot of brush strokes on this. Um, but I want some age to come through. It actually covered too well. <laughs> so I'm just taking some 220 sandpaper and I really, I want to make it look old to match the patina that's left on the metal. So if it goes all the way through, which is what I'm hoping with some elbow grease of sanding it does i know you all are going to love this paper hopefully i remember to link every shop that i got it from etsy or if i printed it and it was nice there again it it came out as a two on two on one page kind of thing but i kept sizing it until i got it onto one page and it could fit my entire tin and all oh, that red green sack stripe has my heart oh wow So now we're on to our last three, and look at this little bucket. Is it not too cute? I think it's a little lunch lunch bucket, maybe? <laughs> it's just so super cute. I like that it has a lid, um, though I'm on the fence because a lot of times these are so cute with greenery in them. And yeah, crows, those primitive sheep. Oh my goodness. But this one's just blah, blah. So we need to get it all washed up. Just know that everything got washed up with Dawn dish soap and hot water and was over, you know, thoroughly dry before I started painting on any of these objects. You want to get your product thoroughly cleaned so your paint will take really well. Love to hear in the comments below if you are a fusion paint user already what's your favorite color because bellwood is quickly becoming one of my favorite colors though i thought okay when i grabbed this brush i knew that it was probably a little bit of overkill and how was i going to get underneath that taped area of the handle but you know yeah you know <laughs> Surprisingly, this only needed one coat. The coverage was amazing. But since the cover was, coverage was so amazing, I need to take some 220 sandpaper and start distressing it. I want to see some of that metal. That metal wasn't anything special underneath there by any means. And I just want to give it that aged look. follow the exact same process of applying the decoupage paper on there and you see it did change the a little bit brighter green but 
there again, no worries. We, we, we need to seal the paper in anyway. And I'm actually switching over to the antiquing glaze to do this. Oh, this just, there's something that this does to that paint. And oh, it just has my heart. And yep, I'm going right over that decoupage paper with it. It's light enough that I don't have to worry about it. Um destroying the paper and not being able to see my image so you just wipe on and then wipe off the excess and though it has the cutest little lid yeah i'm gonna add some greenery so floral foam from the dollar tree store that thrifted bag of crinkled up brown grass that i've been using whoo that was the best three dollars at a sale ever these are also from Hobby Lobby. They are a type of succulent, but they're in that bin where that never goes on sale. They're $2.99 a piece, I believe. Um, but I love that dusty green. I love that I can just, yeah, just stick them right in and that it's not too tall and that just that green accentuates that bellwood color perfectly. Now we have a similar bucket, a similar, but this might be more of a freaking type of sugar bucket. Um, the lid is really black compared to, it may not even, it looks like the original lid because it fits, but it just, it, and the handle, unfortunately the handle is what the handle is. The handle is wonky. <laughs> it, it goes off to the one side and... I don't have any powers of bending handles, so it's just going to stay how it is. And as you see, this one did need two coats, was not completely covered, though I wanted to stress it. I still, you still need the proper amount of paint on an item. So did you make it this far to see the very last one? Yeah, I have a bunny, which actually would be super cute on this brown little firkin, but, but it never sold when it was brown. So let's get it painted up with some cashmere. I think that will really make that bunny pop. Did take two coats to cover, but the coverage is amazing. So, yep, going back in, we're going to really distress this, bring back some of those beautiful details on this bucket. Use the same exact process to put the bunny on there, and you can see it did change the color, but we're going to go over it with that Fusions Antiquing Glaze also. It just is going to take that very stark um, bright paint, which is wonderful, but I'm putting a primitive image with it that I want to tone down. I'm 
there's something about brown stems and white flowers that oh but on this one i'm going to have to cut all the stems off and i'm going to actually have to count the stems in half or in third to give it a little bit more dimension and i'm going to end up adding some matching pip berries that are white with the brown stems also um just because the st the stems themselves are all the same size and to give some height and variance as you see see how long they are to this bucket you just have to kind of play with it just a little bit so i had to take some of my grass out to get them to stick into the floral foam but it's just the fun of keeping doing something until you love it and I love painting and sharing with you all how to make your own decoupage paper as much as flower arranging. Oh, yes. Just, it just takes that item and takes it to the next level. Okay, what did you think? Yes, I have used Etsy quite a few times, small business. I love to support small business and purchase their instant downloads and they're right there, they're right there. So hopefully I have shared with you how to do that, how to purchase them, how to where they are on your computer, remembering to download them. So yes, and they're just, there's beautiful prints out there and I just have a simple non-expensive copier printer um, yeah, nothing special, but I hope that you enjoyed today's video. There's just a million prints on there. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, they're just beautiful. Now, deciding is the, always the hard part, but it's nice because you can pick out exactly what you want and then size it to exactly the project you're working well, on. Let me know down in the comments and below, have I inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way? Again, thanks for watching guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys. And you can see what we're up to. Bye.